It's your Open Source Advocate and I'm back with another video. So in the past I've talked about this application right here a couple of times. It's called Portainer and what it does is it lets you get a view of all of your Docker containers that are running on different instances that you may have different servers. So um, I really like it. It's awesome. It shows you a lot of stuff. It gives you a lot of control. It's a nice graphical user interface. You can do a lot of things from here. Um, I really have three applications running here so Portainer is one of them. Metabase is another one, and then Redash is is the is the rest of these containers. So all these containers are running so that Redash can run, and it's a little bit like Metabase. It's it's for querying data in a database or in several databases, and then creating visualizations, and then from that you can create dashboards and you can have multiple users log into it, things like that. I'm going to do a video on it later. It, it is a little bit more complex in my opinion. Um, so far, you have to know at least a little bit of SQL to get some data started, and then you can use some other charting tools and things like that to create your visualizations. Uh, Metabase, I like a lot just because it's a little bit more user friendly. Um, right out of the gate for beginner users, you don't have to know anything about SQL or about how to query a Mongo database or how to query NoSQL. It'll go through your data and try to figure out some initial visualizations that might be useful to you. And then you can kind of go through and cherry pick the ones you like. And then as you go, it lets you really kind of do a click and drag and drop type build of information that you're looking for. So I really like the Metabase approach. I mean, Redash isn't a bad looking tool. Um, it's got some pretty cool features that may be a little bit more advanced capable than Metabase. But you can really get a lot out of Metabase as well. So I'll be doing a video on Redash later um, to give you guys a look at it. But for now, I wanted to talk about a different application. So when I look at Portainer, this is great. And this looks like a lot of containers running on my system. Um, if this was a Raspberry Pi, the system would probably be crawling. But I want to know that information. So here in Portainer, I can see that. You know, I can go here and I can click on the stats. And I can kind of see what it's using. And it, you know, it'll refresh in five seconds and little by little it'll build up information as it goes. The problem with this is that I'm only seeing it for this container. I'm not seeing all of the other containers and, and I really want to see like a good overview of the system. And there's some other things out there like net data. I'll do a video on that. It's really a great system for looking at your servers and kind of seeing what's getting used. Um, it's a little heavy. A little hard to look at sometimes so there's a lot of people out there who've kind of come up with their own things they'll use stuff like grafana and stuff like that to build their their own kind of dashboards i guess for their system usage but um, portainer is awesome but today i wanted to talk very quickly about docker just in the command line i know it freaks out some people when i bring up the command line but it's really a super useful tool. If you're not used to the terminal or the command line, you, sh you should really, if you're serious about using computers and doing things on servers and doing things with Docker, um, let me just say, if you're not just an end user, if you're a person who's an administrator, an IT administrator, you want to administer your own systems, you should really get comfortable with the command line. Um, first of all, it's fast. It's very powerful. And the more you learn about it, the better you'll be at understanding what you're seeing on the graphical user interface side. So... Uh, with Docker, I want to talk about two things today. So I've done a lot of Docker videos in the past, and I always say, you know, you need to do sudo docker if you're not root or if you're not the, the, the main user. Um, so I'm learning as I go as well. And the way that you solve that is, as your own user, you can do sudo and then user mod. So we're going to modify the user, dash A, and then capital G. So we're going to basically add this user to a group. So dash A add to group, which is capital G. And then we're going to say the group name, which is Docker. And then we're going to say the user's name. So it could be yourself, it could be another user, whoever. But once you do this, it'll ask you for your super user password, of course. Now I've already done this, but once you type in that password and hit enter, it will add you to that group. So now I don't have to do, now you may have to reboot, you may have to log out and log back in to get these permissions to take effect. But once you do, you can just do docker ps, for instance. And here you can see all of my docker containers running on that server. So I'm SSH into the server. I can see all of the containers that are running. I didn't have to type sudo anymore, which is really nice whenever you're trying to, to do things without having to constantly do super user privileges. Um, so add yourself to that docker group, and you will, you'll get rid of the need for sudo whenever you're doing things on that machine. All right, so we've done that, we've done that one. The next thing is I want to see the stats. So, so Docker PS, that shows me the containers that are running, and it shows me how long they've been running, and it shows me their names, which is great. That's great information to have, and it's a quick, it's a quick look at everything that, that I've got running. Um, if I want to see all of the containers that I have, which I think this is all of them regardless, I can do uh, Docker PS-A for all, 
and it'll give you that list as the same list in this case but if you had any containers that weren't running but were available in the system you'd see those as well but what I want to talk about is docker stats so when you run docker stats it's gonna bring up a nice list and you can see this I've got the screen nice and wide so it doesn't wrap the text but here I can see my my container IDs the names of my containers and then I can see the information about how much CPU each one is using which is extremely low so that's really awesome the next thing I can see is the memory usage so my total is 12 gigs on this machine and you can see how much memory each container is actually using and then out to the right of that is the percentage of that memory which is great because memory is important whenever you're running a system you've got to have some memory set aside for the operating system and then some memory for certain applications that may be running in the background and then you've got this docker thing that's running and you want to know like what is it using up this is a great way to see what's going on and maybe you have a container that's super heavy um, one of the ones I can think of is GitLab it uses up a ton of resources so it's a big, it's a really heavy one. So you want to have a pretty beefy server to be able to run that and keep it running. Um, so as we move to the right, you can see your actual um, input and output for your for your network. So you can see if one of those containers is using a lot of network bandwidth. Maybe it's just more in use by your users or by you, or maybe it's doing something all the time in the background. But it'll give you a quick look at that as well. So Docker Stats. This is a really really cool way to get a really quick glimpse at what's going on inside of Docker and it just comes with Docker. It's just there. So you should use this thing. Um, to get out of it you use Control and C like Carl and then anytime you want to get it right back into it you can just do Docker stats again and it'll show you the stats. So here you go. It clears the screen and it shows you what's going on with your machine and you can see that it updates while it's running so it's not something where you have to stop it and update it or refresh it. It's refreshing itself and it's giving you more information. So this is kind of what portainer is going and grabbing from I'm sure for each of those containers but for whatever reason if either I can't find it or they haven't made it there's no um, overview like this inside of portainer which is kinda something I like I'd love to see this in a, in a nice dashboard on portainer where it says hey for this you know instance here's what's going on that'd be great so this is a really easy way inside of the terminal to just get a quick look at what's going on kinda keep an eye on things make sure things aren't going haywire one more tool that I want to talk about for looking at your Docker containers in the terminal, which is great whenever you have a server and maybe you don't want to run Portainer on it or you don't want to run an extra container to, to look at your um, containers. This tool is called CTOP. So very similar to Docker Stats, which is kind of built in. This is one that you install on top of it to see some more information. It's a, it's a really nice tool, actually, and, and it's a really great terminal application. So as you go down, um, you'll see pretty quickly here's how you can install it. So you can install it with pip, um, which is for Python installations by using this uh, command here. But if you don't want to use pip, that's fine. Um, then, then you would go down here and install it using, you know, so once you've got pip installed, you'll install ctop. Uh, if you already have pip installed, you can just skip to the part where installing ctop with it, of course. But if you don't want to do that and you want to use the GitHub uh, way of doing it, then you can basically use this command right here with wget. You would run this. That would run through this part and install basically or, or bring it down from GitHub so it would pull it in. And then once you've got it there, you basically change the permissions on that file that you just downloaded so that it can be run. So you do change permissions to plus x, which is executable. Make it execute. And then ctop. And then you can run the ctop command to actually get uh, some information back in the terminal. So this is kind of what it looks like. There's some other cool stuff that's going on here, so I kind of want to go through that live time. So I'm going to bring up my terminal, and I'm logged into my uh, server that's uh, running all of my Docker containers. And we'll just do ctop first. I've already installed it using that, that GitHub method. And it's going to come up, and it's going to show me some information about my different containers. So here I can see which containers are running something and which containers have some kind of data happening or using CPU usage. And then I can just kind of move down little by little as using my arrow key. And you can see that as I go down, I'm, I'm using the arrow key, and I'm highlighting different containers here. So I can go back up. So I don't have that many containers. A lot of these are my redash stuff that's, that's happening here. Uh, but as I, you know, I've only got, what, eight, nine containers, something like that. So it's not too bad to look at this way. But if you have a lot of containers running, if you're running a major server and you've got a lot of stuff running, then it might be useful to be able to filter. So you use the F, like filter key, and you see down here at the bottom left, you get this filter box. And now I can start typing, and I can say I want to see portainer, and you'll see that I get uh, PO, because I typed PO, I get portainer, and I get the one with Postgres. So if I type one more letter, Postgres is gone, and now I can just look at portainer by itself. 
and then I can just backspace out to bring those things back. So it's live time filtering. So if I do meta, then I get meta base, of course. If I do redash, I can see just the redash containers just by doing that. Now if I hit enter, it'll go back to my regular view. Now with nothing else going on, you'll see that I have this regular view up. So I'm going to go back up to Metabase because it's actually using some bandwidth and stuff. And you see kind of Redash jumped up there suddenly. But uh, I'm going to go back up here to Metabase. And I'm going to go and actually just hit Enter. So I hit the Enter key with nothing else going on. So I'm not doing filtering. I just have it blank and I've highlighted the one that I want and I hit Enter. So now you get a few more things. So I can see it says a single view. So this is going to give us more of a detailed view of the container we've got highlighted, which I really like. Um, log view. So we can see the logs. Uh, we can stop this container from here. We can pause this container from here. We can restart this container from here. We can do an executable shell on this container. So sometimes you have a container and you need to get to an executable shell inside of the container to do something. So if I just run commands from here inside of the terminal and I try to affect Metabase, it's not going to work because it's containerized. It's inside of like a little jar. Remember, we have a fish tank and that fish tank is our main machine. And inside of that fish tank, we put little boxes that are sealed off so the water doesn't get inside of them. And we stack up those boxes. That's our containers. Sometimes we want to get into that box and let a little bit of water in for some reason. We need to clean the floor inside the box. I don't know. Come up with whatever analogy works for you. But you get the idea. These containers are running like their own little system inside of my main system. They're virtualized machines that run very lightweight. So execution shell is something you need to do there. And then, of course, you can hit cancel and you'll get out of it. So you can arrow through it like I am, or you can just use that first letter out there. So O would be single view. So if I hit O, it should take me to single view. It didn't. So we're gonna hit enter. Oh, I didn't hit O. Okay, if I hit O, <laughs> there we go. If I hit the right key, it helps. So now we're looking at a single view of our Metabase container, and you can see what's going on here. So we've got the ID of the container, of course, the name of the container and the label, um, the image that it's using. We've got, if it's using um, any kind of IP uh, stuff, it's using the host IPs, so that's no big deal. It doesn't have any special networking that I'm running inside of Docker, so there's no extra information on that on this one. Uh, we'll look at Redash in a minute and see if we get a little bit more data there. Uh, but down below it, you can see what it's doing with the CPU and how much it's using. So right now, it's not using much CPU. And below that, you can see how much memory it's using. So I've got 12 gigs, and it's using like 730 megabytes, not even a gig. But those are bar charts, and if I were to ramp that up, then you would see it go up all of a sudden. So we, get, we see a few spikes here and there. So that just tells me that there's activity going on inside of this container. So to get out of this container, we're just going to do Control-C, which takes us back to our main process for running CTOP. So I'm going to go down to a little bit different one, and we'll see if we see any changes in network. So up here you can even see that it's showing like different uh, percentages of usage. And down here we see this happening with Redash. So if we go here, we hit Enter, and we can do O. And this time you see there's actually some detail up at the top. You can see a little bit of detail here where it's got some changes in CPU usage and what's going on with how much memory it's using, which is very little memory. Um, it's not really being used right now. Nobody's utilizing this, this server for anything. But you can see here on the networking as well, we've got a little bit of a change. So we've got IPs, and it's it's got the redash default, and it's, it's a 172 um, private network that basically is set up between all those redash containers inside of Docker. So you can see that information here pretty easily. So I'm going to hit Control C to get right back out of it. And we can move up and we can say, you know what, let's go look at Portainer and let's look at the logs view. So here's the logs for my Portainer instance that I'm running here locally. And I can see if there's anything going on. So if I feel like something weird's happening, I can go check out the logs and see what's happening here. And then I can just do Control C to go back. And then if I go, if I go into any of these, I've got different options, you see. So let's go up to... Um, so this is my main server. Um, so we bring it up and we look at the detail here. There's not much going on with the with the main part of the server. Um, so we get a little bit of information here on how much CPU is using and how much memory, of course. So I'm gonna just get right back out of this. I'm gonna bring up that menu again and I'm gonna tell it to restart. And it's restart the container, yes. So I just hit enter and it's gonna restart that container. All right, we've got the container restarted. Now we should be able to go in and see some detail inside of our view here. 
We do. We see it's using up a little bit of megs of uh, RAM here just because it's getting everything booted up and started. So we're also going to see some CPU activity probably happening. But that's what we'd expect whenever it's first starting up. So now we can just control C out of this. So that's C top. C top is a nice tool. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. You can just kind of arrow around and then use the enter key to get your menu and select what you want. And then of course, control C to get back out of it. And then also the nice thing about it is you can do filtering on this list. So you just hit F and start typing what you want to filter down. So now we only see redash. I really like C top. It's a very cool tool. It's very useful. So I hope you'll go out there, check it out. I hope this helps you. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it. Leave me comments so I can improve as we move forward. And I'll talk to you next time.